A very good morning from the KTN News Centre. Thank you for joining us. This is Sunday edition here on KTN News. Uh, we shall be in the next two hours or so speaking about the biggest political stories in this country, talking about what will be happening in the run-up to the October 26th repeat presidential election. It is only two weeks and three days remaining and the IBC uh, continues to prepare for that repeat presidential election. A lot already happening, the country going into what could be a very crucial week ahead of that repeat presidential election. NASA saying they will, in fact, increase the days of protests per week from two to three days. Uh, Jubilee on the other side saying they will continue with their controversial amendments to the electoral laws. The IBC saying Kenya does not need new laws. The international community is uh, begging the country to uh, come, uh, both sides of the political divide, uh, to come to the uh, negotiating table and move ahead with the presidential poll. Uh, Raila Odinga and Nasa saying they will not be part of this presidential election uh, rerun if their demands are not met. Just what gives as Kenya continues to uh, stay in a situation of certain limbo in terms of the business, uh, the business environment and all that. So we shall be taking a look at all that as well as IBC's uh, preparations and also the latest uh, political headlines today, NASA and uh, Jubilee and IBC of course continue to dominate uh, the political headline. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Ben Kitili. Uh, let me introduce my guests very quickly. Uh, I have with me Mutinda Kavemba, political strategist. I have with me uh, Mark Nyamita, member of parliament for Uriri constituency, and his counterparts in Kimilili, that is uh, Didmas Barasa Wekesa, and political risk analyst. Uh, not new here on the show, Dismas Mokua. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me this morning. A lot is happening. Let's start with uh, some of the headlines uh, from the, the two biggest. Uh, newspapers, that is the Sunday Nation and the St Sunday Standard. Uh, for the Sunday Nation, the splash is NASA election puzzle. Just what is happening surrounding the NASA political campaigns, uh, we understand that Raila Odinga is set for a trip uh, abroad in a very crucial time for this country. So just does that give credence or uh, does that continue to raise questions of the October 26 polls? I mean, how serious is NASA doing this? For the Sunday Standard, time running up. What next for Kenya? Of course, decisive week, fears rising that political players are playing with fires. Repeat poll stands off, spills over to the second last week. Um, Mutinda, very quickly, just to start us off, where does all these things leave the country? Jubilee, what you're saying, NASA, what they're saying, everyone sticking to their headline positions. IBC in the middle, really, trying to, you know, organize a repeat presidential election. Uh, you know, t t time is actually really running out because uh, if you are an independent observer trying to see what is happening in the country, you're left wondering whether the 26th of October election date is going to be viable. But uh, there are, the, the only sticking issues are the irreducible minimums that NASA has stuck with. And uh, now with them, NASA is having a problem with the election amendment uh, laws that have... Uh, are being proposed in uh, Parliament. Now those then two issues come out as uh, the issues that need to be sorted out so that we, we get a compromise. So that now the discussions going ahead should be about how do we take care of that because NASA has stuck to their 12 irreducible minimums. I, I, Moshima will correct me if I'm wrong. I think they are 12. And then uh, now uh, Jubilee is pushing ahead with its uh, proposed amendments. And uh, those two seem to be the sticking issues so that we are clear about the path to the uh, 26th. And I, I think the, the, the faster these matters are settled, the better for everybody so that uh, we don't have a situation whereby we don't do the elections on the 26th, or let's say we don't get to the 1st <coughs> of November without having done the repeat election as ordered by the Supreme Court. So it is important for both parties to start thinking of how to get to a compromise a position uh, going forward. Mashimo, are the political class, both sides, the major stumbling block for this country in terms of just an orderly manner of you know, participating in that repeat poll? 
No, I think actually the establishing block in my view are the proponents of the status quo, which is the government of the day. Uh, and they've, they've shown this, you know, by what their statements are and their action now. Um, if I may refer to what my colleague is talking about, the election amendment bills, which is the floor of the House. I mean, look at the content, look at the timing. I mean, so stumbling block for me are the proponents of the status quo, if I may. All right. Yeah. Um, in terms of time running out, and uh, I've, I've also read, uh, you know, the NASA leader preparing to visit the UK. Well, I cannot confirm or deny uh, that, but I mean, the body language of Jubilee, the body language of IABC, is that they're not willing for us to have elections on the 26th of October. And for that reason, um, we, our position is that the, if things are as they are, you know, status quo, we are not going to go into these elections. All right. Yeah. Barasa, do you agree with your, count, with your colleague in the, in the 12th <laughs> parliament that Jubilee does not want election to go ahead? I think uh, what NASA is doing, it has made me believe there are times in life when you have uh, really looked for a certain position for very many years and you're not getting it, then it drains your basic application of common sense. You cannot claim that uh, you are willing to participate in the elections and all you are doing is carrying out demonstrations. Uh, you want to violate uh, the Article uh, 50 of the Constitution of, uh, of a particular officer because the rights of an accused person are clearly spelled out in the Constitution. And if you've written to the Director of Public Prosecution to, press, to investigate IEBC of officials, then you should aim your demonstrations to the Director of Public Prosecution with a view of getting the feedback on the letter which you wrote to that person. So sincerely, surely, what we are seeing in this country, we are seeing uh, politicians who are engaging in, uh, in the demonstrations who are inciting the Kenyan public into uh, people's private businesses. We've seen this happen in Kisumu, where uh, houses, uh, properties that doesn't belong to either Chiropa or Chebukati uh, being vandalized. And uh, this is a completely uh, situation where individual educators are there, uh, leaders in this country, they have just decided to deliberately take leave of thinking because we have avenues that are going to be uh, followed, uh, to address the concerns that they have. But we cannot develop uh, that these are irreducible minimums and you take a hard stance. You must engage the various stakeholders on what you are calling irreducible minimum. But the bottom line, the bottom line is mm -hmm. we have a repeat election coming on 26th. Any activity that political parties, political leaders will be engaged in should be aimed at ensuring that they win. In the, you know, in the forthcoming uh, repeat presidential elections, which NASA, they seem not to have, All right. not to want. This must, what is your view from the middle on this well, very critical issue? We, we, we go back to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said this election was anchored on uh, illegalities and irregularities. About, a 50, about a 40 days after the Supreme Court pronounced itself, one would have expected that IBC would have come out in public and say, Having gone through the Supreme Court, uh, all the directions, judgments, these are the illegalities, these are the irregularities. And this is how we propose to address those. Because it's, uh, it must not be lost that uh, Justice Maraga has indicated that if you come back with the same scenario, the verdict will be no different. So the big question one needs to ask himself is why isn't uh, Chebukati moving in the right direction and ensuring that those illegalities and irregularities have been addressed. And you would understand why Mr. Raila Odinga does not want to participate in this election. Because the Supreme Court has already indicated that the Constitution was uh, violated, the election rules were violated, the ones which are relevant were violated. So it would take a madman to go back to this election with the same human resource, with the same architecture. So one understands where Mr. Raila Odinga is coming from. Even if you are a stupid man in the village, you will not go back to this election if the fundamental issues have not been uh, addressed. And uh, some of the cosmetic changes that uh, Mr. Chebukati is coming up with, that is establishing a special committee within IBC to preside over this uh, election, <coughs> I, I think he wants to believe that Kenyans are so stupid and naive because Mr. Chiloba remains the accounting officer at IBC. 
Chiloba remains the authorized officer at IBC. Everybody at IBC, apart from the commissioners, they work at his pleasure. So you may tell us you are creating a special team for this election, but if this a special team wants uh, any kind of uh, funding, they go back to Chiloba. Chiloba will still be giving the memos. All right. Yeah. So uh, in my view, the stumbling block is about Mr. Chebukati and Chiloba. But again, we, we said here last week, the key performance indicator for Chiloba, apart from uh, reviewing the boundaries, is to deliver a free, fair, and credible election. All right. And the Supreme Court has said this. So it does not even need to wait for the DPP to come and tell him that uh, you committed a mistake. It just needs to so go home. there are procedures this must. Yeah, by the procedures. Okay. And the first procedure has been triggered by the Supreme Court, which says this election was not free, fair, yet credible. You violated no, the Constitution. Yet you violated the law. fingers at any particular officer of the IBC. Anyway, we, ben, uh, where does uh, the backstop? All right. Uh, at IBC, where does the backstop? Good stop? point. Good point. Mm -hmm. uh, we will, we're going to get into this discussion in detail and uh, just talk about what's happening with both sides of the political divide and what's happening with the IBC. So hold your thoughts, uh, put on your thinking caps. Let's take a look at some other stories in the newspapers very quickly. Um, on page seven of the Sunday Standard, no poor violence under my watch, declares Uhuru. Um, Mutinda, um, what, d d does this, um, is this supposed to, you know, go out to, as a warning to the NASA supporters or as a, re a reassurance to, to the rest of the country? Yeah, it's, it's more of a reassurance. You know, he's, he's, the, he's the commander in chief. He's in charge. And uh, like uh, this man wants to put it, the back stops with him in regard to some of these issues. Because uh, as we speak, as we politic, as we look forward to the 26th, the person in charge of this country and who would be blamed if hell broke loose is still His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta. So some of these statements, is he, he, he actually has a duty to reassure Kenyans, especially now that it is, not, uh, it is no longer a secret that there are people who are worried, there are people who seem not to be sure of what lies ahead. This is the best time for him to come and give that assurance that the government is in control and that uh, anybody out to cause mischief is going to be dealt with and uh, effectively so. So I, I think that that is very much in order and it should uh, actually uh, be repeated so that uh, anybody who is uh, getting uh, you know, make signals as to whether we are going to be safe or not. Right. He's assured of, of their safety of life and and, and property. property. So he's, he's just doing what he needs to do as the commander in chief. All right, yes. Mushmo Yamita, the, the the protests that have been ongoing by NASA two days a week <clears throat> now, three days, have not been very peaceful. Um, what, what what's your take on that? First, let me let me comment on the no poll violence under my watch declares the president. I think this is really, uh, uh, how can I, how can I, this, I really am missing a word, but I think the president needs to be aware that it is under his watch that we are seeing the Mungiki regrouping, uh, Christ end under uh, Nairobi business community. We just saw, I mean, in the course of the week, uh, them taking oaths in the famous Mungiki terms and, uh, you know, declaring pres support for himself. So when he comes and says that there's not going to be poll violence, yet his co the bedrock of his support are the ones who are actually preparing for violence, I think he's really uh, pretending to, to, to... You're saying you have information that the Nairobi business community... But we have seen, we have seen, I mean, I do business here in Nairobi. I know people who have been in, who are in Nairobi business community. Uh, my friend here, Mutinda Kavemba, has been in Nairobi, I think, even as a, as a councillor. We know the, the, the legitimate business owners of Nairobi. I can tell you for a fact, the people we have been seeing are nowhere. Two, it is only during this time that we have seen police in deadlocks trying to scamper people from uh, town. Which business are those people in? Number three, you have seen this very, very group of people uh, taking oaths, it was on TV, I think in the course of the week, I'm sure you have the clip somewhere. Uh, them, you know, they were taking oaths, yeah, we, you know, I, I don't know what it means, but I saw thy you, thy you, thy you something in the course <laughs> of the week declaring support for the president. So when he comes and tells us that there's not going to be poll violence under his watch, yet all these things are happening under his watch and he's doing nothing, this is, uh, uh, the president is actually pretending. Not to say that uh, we want violence. Uh, and back to your question that uh, uh, what has actually been happening. You know, we have 
continued to maintain peaceful demonstrations across the country. However, in some of these incidences, you know, uh, the police, and that's why we notify the police, the police need to be with the people to protect the people who are protesting and to identify the bad elements who are within, who you cannot avoid. Even today when there are no protests, they are all over the streets. So the police really need to do their work. So for me, if you ask me what happened in Kisumu, unfortunate, I must say, that uh, that had to happen to a business owner. Whose responsibility was, it, was that the looting and, and, and the destruction of property? When NASA the, are having their protests? The, the responsibility to maintain law and order is for the police. It is actually for the police. And that is why they were actually notified, actually a week before, that there was going to be protest. They were even given a route plan where the protesters were actually going to follow. So the responsibility to protect the property of individuals actually lies with the police. So if there are a few uh, criminal elements, and I'm, I'm informed that about 12 of them have actually been arrested, let the law take uh, its course. So actually I think it is a failure of the police to, to protect business owners. It's not NASA. Yeah. Mr. Mubarasa, what do you think? I think uh, we need to be clear to Kenyans that uh, what is happening, especially in the counties of Kisumu, is regrettable. The properties of uh, people being destroyed, uh, that has no relation with the IEBC. And I think uh, the people who are demonstrating this country are Luos. Uh, we cannot say that the Kenyans are demonstrating. These are Luos who are demonstrating. That's why the demonstration if, you, if I were to rate it, it's 98% successful in counties of, uh, of Luonyansa. You saw they tried to do it in Embu. They, they vanished after a few hours because maybe they were not paid and there were very few. There have been, there have been demonstrations in Mombasa and Nairobi. Of course, uh, I'm saying there are Luos. Uh, and, uh, you know, even we have Luos no, in Mombasa. I, I think, I think, I think, think Mashimewa Mash Mash Baraza is totally out of order. Let me finish. Uh, no, let me no, support think, my point. I, think, I, think I come so from Bungoma. There are no demonstrations in Bungoma. There are no demonstrations in my there constituency in Kimilili. In there were demonstrations in Kakamega. And, uh, there were you. demonstrations in Nairobi, Mombasa. You see, Kitili, when it comes to NASA supporters demonstrating and vandalizing people's property, then they are called demonstrators. When it comes to other Kenyans protecting their businesses, they are called labor demongiki. This is double standard. If you are demonstrating against IEBC, why are you vandalizing the properties of people in Kisumu? Why are you destroying people's business? People have, uh, it's not easy in this country, under the, you know, for, for, for the economy of this country for the last, like, uh, 20 years, to put up a multi-billion building only to be destroyed by a few people within very few minutes. Why, have, why, why has NASA come out to condemn the destruction of properties in the, some parts of this country? Maybe, right. maybe my friend has not read the right. papers today. That should be clear. All right. And I also, I also he has not read to, the papers today. I also want to tell uh, my good the, friend uh, Mokua that uh, maybe NASA could be his client. You need to advise them that uh, you can only demonstrate if you have gone to audit IEBC preparedness in terms of uh, uh, regularizing what the Supreme Court identified. And on the basis of such, uh, uh, they were not satisfied then you can demonstrate. But All we right. are demonstrating based on what? Thank you, you have an audited IEBC preparedness to hold the this repeated must, elections in, you can uh, in respond, to the law. Maybe you can respond to that and <laughs> give, your, give us your views on, on these demos. Well, number one, when uh, the president gets sworn into office, and you recall when uh, President Kenyatta was sworn into office, he was given a Bible and he was given a ceremonial sword. Mm -hmm. That sword is supposed to protect and secure properties and lives for every Kenyan. It doesn't matter from which political party, it doesn't matter race, economic status. So when the president says that uh, there shall be no poll violence, that statement must be welcomed and it must be appreciated. But it now needs to go to the next level and ensure that the police maintain the law and order. That's their primary responsibility. So that at all times when you're having these uh, demonstration, it's expected that at the criminal intelligence networks will actually establish that a few guys who are about to engage in mischief. And if they engage in looting or they want to, to kill anybody, engage in assault, then they must be picked up immediately and then uh, suffer the consequences. And then uh, in, the, in the interest of uh, national cohesion, it's unacceptable for Honorable Baraza 
to indicate that the people who are doing demonstrations in Kenya are Luos. That's uh, ethnic profiling. I don't think that is consistent with uh, Article 10 of our Constitution. It's not even consistent with his author of office. When he was sworn into as a member of the National Assembly, he said he's going to respect the, the Bible. So you cannot come on a national forum and say that it's only members of the Luo community who are engaging in uh, demonstrations. And I'm surprised that Honorable Onyamita has not taken, uh, has not uh, registered offense and, uh, you know, yeah. bring the points I into position. Did. But be that as it may to Honorable Baraza, the Supreme Court, majority ruling has indicated there were illegalities, there were irregularities. Simple meaning, without even being the benefit of uh, a lawyer. When something is illegal, it means it's not uh, constitutional. It means some laws have been uh, broken. Now, for Chebukati and Chiloba, they do not need to wait for NASA to go to the streets to say that we've done an audit. It's expected that they would have done their own special audit. When they went for a retreat, they should have told us, these are the mistakes that we did. We do not intend to repeat them again. And this is, these are the interventions we are putting in place. Now, in the absence of that, and with the acrimony coming from the commission, I mean, we are now told that the commission is divided three, and I mean, three commissioners supporting change, uh, four commissioners supporting uh, the status quo. Yes. What would an, a, a rational man would come to one conclusion, that there is trouble within the commission? And again, going back to our Kenyan history, you realize the government of the day will never, ever come to the negotiating table unless there are street demonstrations. You remember for us to repeal Section 2A, there were street demonstrations. For us to get a new constitution, there were street demonstrations. So it seems in Kenya we have adopted it as a best practice. That if you want the government of the day, be it President Moi, be it President Kibaki, be it President Kenyatta, you have to go the, to the, only, the only listen, or rather the only trigger to a conversation is street demo demonstrations. But again, going back to NASA, in as much as it is the responsibility of the Kenyan police to maintain law and order, they must be sure that when they're doing the demonstrations, they do not allow people to infiltrate their group <laughs> so that they cause violence. I mean, if you're in a demonstration and you see one of your colleagues jumping across the road going to a supermarket to grab a TV, it's incumbent on uh, the demonstrators to make sure that that one uh, doesn't happen. Have the NASA leaders been vocal enough to condemn any ab such? Ab absolutely. And I just wanted to, to, to tell my friend, Mishimura Baraza, uh, on standard page eight today, I was actually uh, with uh, with a NASA uh, presidential candidate yesterday at his home, uh, and I had him. He did a conference there, and he actually condemned in the strongest term possible that uh, the incidences that actually the incident that actually happened in Kisumu. In fact, he has gone on record and said even burning on tire of tires on tarmac should not happen. When he was a minister for roads, it's even in the paper today. He ensured that those roads were actually tarmacked. He, it would beat logic for, for, for our people to reverse the gains that we have actually gone. So he, we have actually been on record, and we must condemn the incident that actually happened in Kisumu. All right. There's something and, I would like uh, to challenge. Uh, just maybe before that, what yeah. I wanted to say is NASA demonstrators did not particularly go to loot in the supermarket and destroy property. They were free criminal elements. You know, the jobless youths, the people who have been made jobless by this government in this country, who are desperate, who pretended to be part of the team and found their way. I mean, it's not the first time we've been doing this demonstration. Well, your opponents would argue about that, but Mutinda, you wanted to say something? Yes, yes, yes. There are two things that Mwashimiwa said. He first, uh, 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 he profiled the Nairobi business community as, uh, as Mongiki. I thought that was is very unfair, because we need to understand that Nairobi has got all types of business people, from the Manu Chandarias, who are represented by Kepsa, up to the Mamamboga, and uh, no one has a right to deny them the use of no, the term what business community. They are and, not the uh, and, business owners. No, 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 no. If you have your own, right. you're selling your own burger, that. that is your business, and you are a business person. So if, if it is the small business people who've been coming together to protect their business businesses, because for obvious reasons, when there's demonstration in town, Manu Chandaria might not feel the pinch as much as the person who's selling their wares in the street. So that is the person who faces the, the right. risk. Then there's another very crucial point that also has to be corrected. Mwishmua said that they are, that police dreadlocked police have been quelling chaos. I, I think you notice that. Honestly, we need to be a bit responsible because that, that, that is a very serious allegation. And uh, personally, I haven't seen that. And I wonder where Mwishimiwa saw that, that uh, they are dreadlocked people who have been given police uniform to go and stop. I, I think we, yes, we need yes. to be fair, careful yes. even right. as we, we, we use propaganda in this campaign 
period so that we we, we, we don't uh, politicize some very sensitive Thank institutions you. and to that extent. Thank you, Mutinda. Yes. In 20 seconds, Mushmua, what did you say, dreadlock policeman? I said we have seen people in dreadlocks. I mean, there's been a, a photo even being circulated on social media, and I'm sure Mutinda is only pre um, is only uh, pretending to be ignorant of the same. But you know, you can put a face to the other face of the people who are actually on the street. Exactly. The people who have actually been coming to disperse, uh, I tell you, the people who have been coming to disperse uh, the, the protesters in town are actually not the police now. So it's a, it's a, they it's are dreadlocked a picture, people. It's a and that's what on, on social media. It's very good to uh, you know, shed light on that. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Let's, let's take a quick break here on Sunday edition. When we return, we step away from the newspapers and take a look at the real issues now. Take a look at what's happening. What next? Kenyans are going into a very crucial week. It is only two weeks and three days remaining to go, uh, to go rather, to that uh, repeat presidential poll. Uh, there is a standoff between both sides of the political divide. Jubilee insisting they will go ahead with the controversial amendments to the electoral laws. NASA increasing the number of days that their supporters will be on the streets protesting to three per week. Just what gives and where does this leave the country? And the IBC, let's talk about that next here on Sunday edition. Over to five.